Welcome guys, this is Best in Business with Manny Lopez where we turn passion into success. Today I've got Scott Utterback with me and he's been able to create a seven figure business model in the home improvement industry. We have him here to share his story and share a little bit about the insights of how he did it. So welcome to the show, Scott. I'm excited to have you here, brother. I'm giving it to you for free. Thank you. Glad to be here. Awesome. So let's get right into it. Now, most people tuning in, they're not going to know who Scott is. So tell them a little bit about who you are and uh, why you got in the home improvement industry. Well, I got into home improvement and construction uh, backgrounds a little bit bizarre. Um, I actually left home and started construction at 12 in India. Wow, interesting. And uh, um, I had a small business selling golf balls on the golf course, as probably a million other people have, and overheard a handful of guys talking about doing construction overseas. And the more I plugged and prodded and so forth, they finally turned me on to uh, this company that uh, operated in more than 60 countries. And, uh, and so anyhow, long story short, I was able to uh, go to the Merritt Island, Florida, do some construction boot camp for a couple of months and then go to India, which actually I'm going to be returning to soon to the place where it all started at the end of the summer after 35 years. Wow. Interesting. So uh, construction boot camp. Tell me a little bit more about that. I've never heard of that before. Well, it, it's a, uh, they have a, a boot camp set up out on the wetlands. You know, you bathe in the swamp, you wash your clothes in the swamp. It's, it's, their facilities are far better now, but 35 years ago, it was pretty rough. Uh, they had a Cajun bell ringer that woke you up at 4.30 in the morning. You literally did like a, a military-style uh, obstacle course in the morning with your oh, construction wow. team getting over 15-foot walls and nets and swings and, <laughs> nice. you know, and everything else. You know, no candy, no sugar, and it was just construction 24-7 for, uh, you know, two weeks at a time. Uh, and, uh, and so that way you were just full on focused on what you were doing, what you're looking to achieve, but also to create uh, culture and teamwork uh, with your crew before you then went off to your country that you're heading to, to, to do work. So, um, and there was some incredible survival skills that actually came along with it because when you get tight with your team and then you jump on a, a train in India that comes up to a stop and literally jerks to a stop. And in one second, it starts back up but you have 32 crewmen carrying 33 pound military bags full of tools and food and that kind of stuff. You got to chuck it off the, off the train and make sure that you have everything. If everybody wasn't tight and uh, you know, and, and with their teamwork, et cetera, you'd lose people and, and equipment. Oh, wow. Wow. So interesting way to get into the industry, but you know, definitely a great process of immersion. I mean, they say one of the best ways to learn a language is just straight up immersion, right? Get into the in. and, and learn it by actually being there and having nothing but that process to go through. So from leaving the construction boot camp, where'd you end up from there? From there, I, I ended up in India. And so I worked on an outpatient clinic. Uh, it was a one square acre outpatient clinic for a year. And then from there, I came back to the United States for a couple more weeks of the boot camp, advanced boot camp. And then from there, went to Switzerland and worked on a crew there for a year. Interesting. Now, you did this for, for how many years? Uh, well, it was just it was a couple of years where I was in India, Switzerland, Germany. Uh, I've done work in Armenia, Belarus, uh, some other countries. But overall, my construction experience has been here in the United States. Interesting. Anything, anything that you created that was like, wow, this was a very interesting project to, to get completed? Uh, <laughs> the, the project in Armenia was one that was beyond interesting. It's one I can't discuss, but I can tell you it was one that was of extreme interest. Awesome. Well, that's always fun, huh? It's like, it's the most interesting thing. I can't talk about it though. <laughs> Which one? Give me something you can talk about. Uh, at least maybe something that could tie into an experience that you're like, well, wow, I didn't know that about the construction industry, or maybe this is something that if somebody was to go, I mean, I have a lot of people in my circle that are currently in the construction industry. My dad, for example, he's been in there. He's about to retire. He's two ways, two years away from retirement, 63, 63 years old right now. And looking at what you've been able to create and what you've done over the last, you know, multitude of years in this space, 
what is something that if you're just starting out day one, they need to know? I think that there's opportunity. Uh, and I think that there's opportunity that most people don't understand. As a matter of fact, we're completely revamping our company right now. In other words, I had three stores in Colorado, three stores in Oregon, and we actually just finished closing them all down. And we did that because we want to completely revamp it. And we do. We have two firms that we've hired that are designing brand new brick and mortar stores that are tied, um, integrated with online shopping uh, portals. But mm -hmm. then at the same time, we're integrating educational systems. Uh, and centers, actually educational centers in each of our stores. So that way, not only can we teach local people, uh, whether it's you know, millennials or students coming out of college uh, that can't find the type of work that they're looking for. And, and uh, you know, people that are like you uh, who, are, who are working with people coming out of the, uh, you know, the foster care system, single mothers, uh, existing contractors who want to improve their skill sets and, and, and knowledge. Um, 35 years of building around the world and focusing on uh, being a kitchen and bath specialist, um, we want to pass on that education. So I actually recently moved here to Austin for the sake of uh, teaming up with Richard Crawford, who's an Emmy Award winning video producer. Uh, our goal is to hit 6,000 tutorial videos in the home improvement industry specifically so that way we can be the leader in construction education in the United States. Hmm. So, but, the, but to your point, uh, your question there is, there is more opportunity in the construction today who mm -hmm. really understand. As a matter of fact, Fortune Magazine, Inc. Magazine have both put out publications as well as others saying that it's the number one industry right now in the United States ripe for disruption. And, um, and if you really take a look at the stats, the average age of a contractor is 57. For every one person coming into the industry, five people are leaving, and the industry is already 2.5 million people short. And so that's where education is, is so needed. And the government has focused since the 1950s on a campaign of work smart and not hard. And they've put out all these campaign posters, you know, that show the guy in a split photo where he's got the hard hat on and a sledgehammer over his shoulder and he's dirty and he's got kind of a dissatisfied look on his face. Why? Because he's been working hard. But right next to that is the same guy, clean haircut, got his cap and gown on, you know, and his diploma is all clean paper in his hand. Well, he's been working smart, you know, smart to the tune of $1.7 trillion of student debt. Mm -hmm. And most people think that, you know, you have to get the college education, uh, you know, in order to be successful. And yet so many people can't find jobs, not realizing, you know, what, if you were a good tile setter uh, in the construction industry, you know, you can make almost 200 grand a year. You know, plumbers are making $110 an hour plus, electricians the same, and the list goes on and on. As an individual with no employees, if you were just a self-employed person running your own business, you could easily, easily make a six-figure income wow. with all kinds of opportunity in this industry. So your business, you had created it to over a million dollar business, and, but you're pivoting. You're, you're going to be taking that business down to pivot into online and education. Now, yes. you kind of explained why, right? I mean, you, you've been invested for many, many years in looking at these trends, right? Noticing that, you know, the construction industry is number one for, for being disrupted. It's right, right for now. disruption, absolutely. And in, your, in your case, what you did, instead of just kind of riding it out and waiting for it to crash and burn like a lot of people did in 20, you know, 2007, waiting, you know, not paying attention to what's really going on and being basically just smacked in the back of the head out of nowhere, right? Where, you know, people like yourself saw these things coming, right? And you're seeing something coming right now, the construction industry having a complete disruption in their whole process. I mean, you've got millions that it's under, you've got, um, I definitely see why you're going in this route is, and it was, this is what a lot of I teach now as well, is where I teach people how to serve their way to success. And serve really just equals teach, right? If you can teach, give it the do-it-yourself models away for free or educate people with platforms or systems or subscriptions where instead of them having to go and try to figure it out on their own, Get to somebody like Scott, who's created a seven-figure business in this industry, and find out how to do it the right way, right? Knowing that there's massive opportunities. I like this. This is really good stuff. What would you say is something that 
most people don't know about the construction industry? Well, aside from the opportunity uh, that's there, um, the, 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 it's probably one of the most stable industries that exist in our country as well. I mean, even when there's cycles, you know, if you, if, like you had mentioned 2008, which I, I, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say I took a beating through that as well, just because I was in the industry and I have to own a lot of houses as rentals. Uh, but nonetheless, the, um, the thing is, if you are paying attention to the cyclical clocks, if you will, of the industry, mm -hmm. then once again, you pivot. I mean, so a lot of people who are building, uh, you know, starter homes or custom homes or whatever, and then all of a sudden the industry starts to shift, well, you move into uh, doing renovations, you know, so, and then like right now, there's a big shift in the industry with millennials, millennials, uh, you know, a lot of them are buying older homes that they want to renovate uh, um, to take advantage of the resources that they do have without going into great amounts of debt, which is smart. Uh, and so they're putting sweat equity into the houses, et cetera. And so for that reason, um, you know, there's a, a move towards a growth in terms of renovation, kitchen and bath renovation specifically, uh, as well as, you know, you know, putting in new windows and floor coverings and whatever. But the point is, is that, um, you know, regardless of what the economy is doing, uh, floods take place in kitchens and bathrooms, and there's always need for construction workers, especially right now. Okay. So if you, uh, if you subscribe to, um, Global warming, uh, I mean, I, I believe climate change has taken place, always has for the history of the world. So regardless of what your belief is, there's change that's on the horizon. With that change comes uh, opportunity because, one, if you look at Houston that got hit by a hurricane, you look at California that got hit by fires, I mean, all of a sudden in a one-season period of time, you had 30,000 new homes needing to be built, rebuilt, uh, and renovated. In California, you had – I think seven or 8,000 homes, you know, through fires. And so I mean, who's going to do that? Who do we have available? And if the industry is already short 2.5 million people, who's going to fill the gap? You know, so there's such a need. There's always going to be a need. And not only that, but you take a look at like Obama put in a $1.1 trillion. Your audio. The need is always there. Yeah. You, you got cut off when you're saying Obama put in a one point oh, one point one trillion dollar infrastructure package, uh, you know, for road improvements and stuff. That's construction. Yeah. You know, um, and, and I, I want to point out something you had said exactly with change comes opportunity. And absolutely. That's a really interesting concept to really look at because most people aren't looking for the future. Right. You're already looking at all of these things. You're looking miles and years and years ahead than most other people and you're making your decisions on those, not necessarily trends, but just the market and where it's going. And that's something I think is a really big factor to success is learning how to pivot, learning how to find the opportunities and learning where change is going in your industry or the industries that you may be paying attention to. Very interesting. And so tell me a little bit about where you see things going for the next, let's say, five years from now, where, where does this industry go? The home improvement industry? I'll tell you exactly where it's going. Cause I'm the guy taking it there. <laughs> All right. So right now, if you take a look at retail, the retail component across the country in multiple sectors, mm -hmm. uh, retail is struggling and it's struggling because there's a move towards online sales Un unarguable, right? What people are starting to see is that there's companies who strictly went online sales uh, and yet they're struggling. But what they're finding is that if there is a convergence between brick and mortar and online shopping, it's like the holy grail. Mm. Well, I think the holy grail is actually a step farther. And that is the new stores that we're launching here in a year that are, that are being designed and uh, the architects and, and so forth are, are plowing through it right now. Uh, for us, the new stores that we're launching is going to be a retail store that you can come in. It, it, it appeals to the limbic senses of the brain. So in other words, your taste, feel, smell, you know, uh, touch, so forth. So that way you can see the cabinets, you can see the tile, you can look at the floor coverings that you want. But then you walk over to a kiosk and you order it online. So instead of people coming into the store and shopping you on their smartphones to see if they can find a better deal than what you have in your store, your store is representation of your online. And so they can't shop you. 
right? And then from there, our alliance partners with our cabinet makers and our floor covering people and our tile distributors, all of the product then gets delivered directly to the builder or the homeowner directly from the manufacturer, therefore, you know, eliminating our overhead and liability expenses when it comes to warehousing and handling and shipping and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's the best marriage between brick and mortar and online. However, we're adding to it. Every one of our showrooms will actually we have a schooling and educational center in it so that way we can teach people because we did a ton of research that shows that over 80 percent of people regardless of demographic they want to do or handle their own project and so we're giving them the tools the resources and the education necessary to set them up for six for success right, All right. Well, let me just repeat what i got here so what you're saying is that most people either using brick and mortar which is struggling going online which is struggling if they're doing the, each of these solo. The, the golden holy grail is to have a brick and mortar plus online plus having the online ordering process built in to the actual kiosk, or not uh, the brick and mortar, and then have a school education behind that. I think that's really interesting. And then you remove the liability by having the manufacturers partner with you to deliver directly to customer. Wow, that's an interesting so, concept. I like that. And the store has actually become a service center. So even though we're not handling the products, the people don't feel like they're left hanging when they get something in and they're like, hey, I'm, what about this? I believe that I ordered it in this color or I have a question with this or this needs to be returned. They have a place in which to go that can help service them so they don't feel like the loan range is in their house. But the beauty of this all as well, in order to ensure that we have all the right documentation uh, to be able to quickly access the history of everyone's purchases, believe it or not, all of this brick and mortar online shopping tutorial and education is being launched on blockchain technology. Oh, wow. So now are you even integrating blockchain? Yes, we are. Wow. So, so we'll be able to track the, from the roots of where a product is coming from, where the materials are being used to build it. Mm -hmm. to the manufacturer, to our store, or to the, the people who are buying it from us. I mean, for, literally from uh, cradle to grave on the history of a product, we'll be able to, to track that. Now, is that going to be accessible for the client, or is this really for your back-end process? This is for our back-end process. Nice. That's well, right. I mean, this will help us technology, If people don't realize how powerful this really is, it's really giving you guys the insights of having full transparency across the board and making it to where you don't lose that data, right? It's, it's basically, you know, distributed on, you know, a whole network. Um, I mean, there's a whole process uh, of benefits to that. And I definitely saw this a couple of, I don't know if it was a year ago or two years ago, I saw a video uh, about the industries that blockchain will disrupt. And one of them is the manufacturing process, right? By being having that full transparency from seeing exactly how you said it, from cradle to grave, from exactly the process from beginning to end and having that, that full transparency. Amazing innovation there that you're, you're putting together. And then you're going to be, you said you're going to be working on taking your company public at some point. That's right. We're, we have a four-step phase that we're doing to, uh, to launch, to relaunch, if you will, the company. We're currently at phase two, where here in the next few weeks, we're going to be uh, launching a Reg CF uh, through Start Engine to raise one million seventy. That's the cap on a public raise through a Reg CF. Uh, our attorneys are already putting together a Reg D to take it public, backed with a Reg A+, plus for the, so that way we can do a cap raise internationally. Our phase three cap raise is $45 million, and then from there, uh, that will allow us to actually go uh, under construction with our first three locations, which will be flagship out of Austin, Texas. Our goal is to have 14 locations open over the next couple of years between four states, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Colorado. And then from there, we're looking to scale uh, coast to coast and um, take the company public with an IPO. Wow. Awesome stuff, brother. Now, is there anything that you want – the the audience know these are people that maybe they own their own businesses they're aspiring entrepreneurs students within the from orphan to ceo program maybe they want to learn more from you directly is there something on maybe that you could share that they get access to that can maybe learn more about this i know you said you're building out your kind of your online education systems right now where do you kind of see that being implemented is that some of way accessible now how can people get access to this 
uh, it'll be accessible in the very near future. So right now we don't have this uh, out in public. We're still, um, when we have videos that are under production now, we're releasing a software program called the Virtual Contractor that our first set of videos are going to be attached to that literally puts the ring in some of those and helps them uh, step by step through their uh, remodel project, whether it's a kitchen or bathroom. Uh, so very soon we're going to have a lot uh, underway. Our goal is to hit 6,000 videos, which would uh, uh, we would be the dominant uh, educator, if you will, with that on YouTube uh, and then our personal platform. The cool thing is that we're doing is we're tweaking the YouTube platform so that way when you're watching a video, for example, uh, like installing cabinets and it's 13 steps, we're breaking those 13 steps down into chapters that you can watch on the, the uh, app that Manny's going to develop for us here. So that way, uh, <laughs> a little plug for you. Um, so that way, when you're in your kitchen doing the work, you know, you can just look at that step at a time, eat the elephant, bite at a time, you know, so to speak. But at the bottom of the video is going to be the items that you need. Oh, I need two speed clamps, a pound and a half of screws, whatever. And you can click on that and have our Alliance partner ship it directly to you. So that way it's there just in time. So we're tying our online to, uh, portal to our videos as well. So all of this will be... Uh, hitting the market in the very, very near future, a uh, step at a time. That's why I say we took a major step back so that way we can take an astronomical step forward. It's all under and in the works now, uh, coming to a neighborhood soon to you. Nice. And I think this is, I think, the biggest part of the takeaway from this interview is the pivot, right? And, you know, you've created success. You can continue to just rally on this success, maybe build another couple million dollar business, but really you're understanding the need for a change in the industry, a need for more education, a need for filling the gap of that shortage of two and a half million in this industry. And what you decided to do was say, look, we don't need to just put, you know, I like the way you did it because instead of you continuing on with your three stores, right? And having those, not necessarily a distraction, but it's not allowing you to put all of your efforts in this new idea. And what instead of you doing, you just pulled that back so you can focus more on making that big launch forward. And I think that's going to be a big difference maker in what you do. And I talk about this all the time. I just posted, I think about this just yesterday where we were sharing about um, not being able to do too many things at once, right? Focus, follow Absolutely. one course until successful. And you created a course, you made that successful. Now you're saying there's a better way to do this. We're going to create 6,000 tutorial videos. We're going to create an online platform. We're going to change the model of brick and mortar plus education and online and tie that all with blockchain. I mean, you're, you're definitely disrupting the game. You're going to be the disruption of this industry. I can definitely see it. I'm excited to be able to share this message with my audience. Uh, what they'll be able to do, if you guys have any questions to Scott, uh, just go and put them in the comments. We'll make sure we get them directly to him. How do people get a hold of you? Let's say they want to, you know, Scott, I want to be able to maybe pick your brain, hire you as a consultant. Maybe, maybe I've got a resource I can help plug this in a little bit faster. Maybe we want to help in some of this capacity, be one of your partners. Who knows? How can they get a hold of you? What's the best method? Uh, email that comes directly yeah. to me through my company, which is KB Authority, as in Kitchen and Bath Authority, TX for Texas, at gmail.com. At gmail i'll put it in the description guys so you guys have access to that if you want to reach out to him directly um by the interview process it'll have a button click your email so it'll make it very simple uh you guys will get access to this uh in the app in the school of business there's gonna be a lot of great educational uh platforms to be able to find this in so any last things that you want to leave our audience with scott i apologize i lost that last sentence there oh i said any last things that you want to leave our audience with I do. There's one thing that I think is very, very important that has made all the difference for me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came to the point where I finally tuned out all the white noise around me. Because right now there's a million people trying to sell you something. There's a million people trying to distract you as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. My recommendation is turn off all the white noise long enough for you to take a look around you. There is so many unlimited opportunities that are in your presence every day that float by like radio waves that we don't see because we're simply not tuning in to hear them. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got rid of the white noise and started tuning in, what I tuned into is what industry am I in? 
what are the gaps? What are the problems that I'm seeing? Even if it's in my neighborhood, even if it's just limited to my city or my state or whatever it is, what is the gaps that are around you? And what can you do as a person to step up to the plate to help other people? If you'll serve other people around you, it'll take you to the next state and the next state. And then so it'll open up opportunities for you. So if you're seeking opportunity, shut down the white noise, breathe for a moment, look around you and see how you can serve. Mm, I love it. Thank you, Scott. I mean, that's, that's definitely an essence of serving you a way to success, guys. Finding an opportunity, building upon that, throwing your skills into that, and just continuously showing up and giving value. Thank you, Scott, for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, and always Thank remember, you. guys, you are too blessed to be stressed. Go serve your ways. Uh-huh.